Welcome to the Grand Theft World Podcast, and thank you to all the members who make this podcast possible. You can learn more over here at grandtheftworld.com. Top right corner, join the community. That's how you keep up to date. And we do have a town hall coming up this week. So we get together for several hours and we talk to each other. I know it's pretty crazy these days, but that's something we do. We find it uh, very beneficial. Now, this week in Grand Theft World News History, uh, we got a banger episode for you. So uh, January 6th, you might have heard about it. It's the biggest insurrection, biggest thing that happened since the Civil War in America, allegedly big horrific event, worse than 9-11 in Pearl Harbor. Harbor. Uh, many exaggerations and hyperboles aside, it is a historic day for many reasons, not to mention uh, the hundreds of political prisoners who are currently held just because they were exploring the people's house, a house they paid for. And apparently, according to new January 6th committee findings, uh, they had a whole bunch of FBI guys that let them in there and they still don't want to talk too much about it. But now we do have some evidence that uh, orchestrated, artificially created, constructed, not organic not authentic, not genuine, is what's coming out about the claims uh, made by our government on that uh, eventful day back a couple years ago. Now, we are four years into that situation. We still don't have certain reports, and uh, you know we, the investigations have maybe been stalled. So you're going to hear evidence tonight that both shows FBI complicity in January 6th and leading people into their demise, but also continuing convenient you know, they, they can't get the report done before the election and maybe not even before the inauguration, because who would want to be able to improve our country uh, quickly? They got to do it very slowly. So we're going to learn about that now. Also, we have sad news this week about the demise of Infowars. They're going to liquidate it. It looks like in November and they're going to put it up for auction. Maybe one of you in the audience would like to make a savvy investment and uh, help that continue. But we're going to learn about that. And then I'm going to juxtapose that story of free speech gone awry to a story called uh, George Soros purchases 200 radio stations in 40 different markets and the FCC throws their rules away. Say those rules don't apply to you, George Soros, you international investor. Come on over and buy our radio stations during election year and take care of Sean Hannity and Glenn Beck. So we're going to look into that story because that might be concerning to somebody who is uh, interested in freedom and justice in the American way continuing here. Being that Soros uh, admittedly helped the Nazis back in the day, and it was the best time of his life. Uh, those, those quotes are there for 60 Minutes listeners. We could go to the Clip Genie later and find them for you. A hundred percent decrease in opium production in Afghanistan since the United States pulled out. It's amazing, right? The, it's like the Taliban stopped opium. We invaded. We started opium again for 20 years. We leave. They go back. They stop the opium. It's almost like they don't want opium being grown in their cult uh, culture over there and being the number one cash crop in Afghanistan. Maybe it was just some Westerners seeking to use their uh, resources over there for internationalist game. We'll have to check that out because that's a different storyline than what follows. <clears throat> there are... <laughs> Number three, let's see, we have tonight Trump stories on attempted assassinations of former President Trump. Now, of course, you know, number one was Thomas Matthew Crooks. He ended up demised. Number two was that Ryan Ralph, Ralph guy, baby Ralph. And, uh, you know, they actually did arrest his son, too, on uh, some porn charges. But now we have a third attempted assassin. And it comes to us this past week as news. Even though that attempted assassination happened on July 12th, the day before Thomas Matthew Crooks took shots at former President Trump. So it's very interesting that they, you know, they felt it was probably too close in proximity for those news stories and they wouldn't get to breathe properly. So they're like, let's tell people about Crooks because we all saw it. And they didn't tell us very much about the guy who had a uh, multi-million dollar bounty from a foreign country to come in and kill a former president here. So anyway, that's just part of the uh, the new immigration policy. I'm sure it's all going to work out. Now, we have Israel, uh, Israel getting into it this week with uh, Lebanon. We saw last week they had some pagers and some other electronic freak-offs. This week they saw fit to go in and assassinate the Hezbollah commander, which is, you know, rules of war, man. You go in, you got better tactics, strategies, techniques. You can be dominant. It's interesting, though, the juxtaposition between Israeli techniques when dealing with Hezbollah versus Hamas, because when they could have gone in and gotten Hamas leaders in Qatar and left the women and children in Gaza and the West Bank alone, 
they chose not to do that. So we're going to have to like look at motivations behind some of these actions of claim self-defense tonight. Uh, the fact that I'm wearing this sweatshirt is completely coincidental to that news story, I'm sure. Also, uh, Candace Owens, she's been digging up not skeletons in Kamala's closet. Apparently, Kamala has entire cemeteries in her closet. Those cemeteries were owned, apparently, uh, by her Irish slave-owning family that has been well hidden from the American public because most people of color think Kamala's uh, their person of representation, not understanding that the Democratic Party traditionally has supported slavery since the 1800s, and uh, the Republican Party was created as the abolitionist or the get-rid-of-slavery party. So it's still ironic how people are misled and Stockholm syndromed and gaslit into their uh, little MSNBC, CNN, Fox News type of crowds. But we can learn our way out of that, and we're going to do that tonight. We also have some news coverage of uh, Diddy. It does go beyond the thousand bottles of baby oil. We have some <laughs> Some new evidence for, for later this evening in the show when we get to the wee hours in the morning. But before we can get to the wee hours in the morning, we got to cover the stuff in front of us right now. So let's go to Luke Radowski of uh, wearechange.org and thebestpoliticalshirts.com. Let's get his report from earlier today, and then we will get to the news of the week as it happened through the week and the evidence artifacts that go along with that. So you can have a comprehensive understanding instead of a fragmented figment of your imagination of what's going on. Let's get to it right now. Huh, I wonder how things are going in the Middle East. Yep. Pretty awful. And about to get a lot worse, as a lot of people are now expecting a ground invasion into Lebanon after the Hezbollah leader was just taken out by Benjamin Netanyahu, who made the call on U.S. soil. What's going to be happening next? How will this event transfold? What were the important details that we need to understand from all of this as the United States is now sending complicated messages saying... We're trying to de-escalate while at the same time saying we fully support this larger escalatory action. Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this independent media broadcast. As, of course, the main story right now, which is significant, which is important, which everyone should be talking about, is the confirmation, even from Hezbollah, that its leader, who was underground, who didn't use any kind of tech, who was hiding out, who is specifically targeted by the Israelis, has been confirmed KIA this Saturday from an Israeli airstrike in the south of Beirut. He was one of the founders of Hezbollah and was known for making that terrorist organization a dominant political and military figure in the region for over 30 plus years, as the Israelis have been trying to take him out for a very long time. And this is the biggest development when it comes to the situation in Lebanon in a very long time. Something that will significantly escalate tensions here as, of course, Hezbollah has been very close to Iran. As now, there's also three military targets that are being attacked simultaneously by the Israelis. Now, why are they doing this? We'll get into that in just a little bit. As the Israeli military said that it carried out a precision airstrike Friday that was confirmed Saturday to take out this key leader of Hezbollah. As the Prime Minister of Israel announced that he, quote, wasn't a terrorist, he was the terrorist. As the Lebanese Health Minister also reports six casualties, 91 injuries in this particular strike that levied six apartment buildings, as other commanders have been also reported to have been taken out. As the body of this man was found and now signals a larger escalation in the bigger conflict here that has been going on ever since October 8th, when, of course, Hezbollah started to fire rockets from the south of Lebanon into Israel in support of the Palestinians. Now, the Israeli authorities have made many pleas telling them to stop. A lot of these rockets have been absolutely unsuccessful because of the Iron Dome that U.S. tax dollars pay for. This is, it's fair to say, the escalations have been going on since almost last year, as the Israelis have been promising to put pressure on Hezbollah until until they stop sending rockets into their country. This says earlier this month, the Israelis used a 15-year-long sabotage operation where
where they put explosives and pagers and walkie-talkies that targeted a lot of the Hezbollah military leadership, maining thousands of individuals with this deliberate sabotage attack that also escalated the situation dramatically. As according to many military sources, now Israel believes that they have a Hezbollah on the ropes and that soon they will be, quote, coming in to finish the job with boots on the ground in the south of Lebanon that could be placed there at any moment, at any time. As strategically, a lot of people believe that Hezbollah is extremely weak right now as their leadership has been decapitated. Most of their members had their fingers or private parts blown off through pager sabotage attacks as a lot of eyes are now on Iran to see how they will respond. As, of course, Hamas sent their condolences to the leader of Hezbollah as the Iranian supreme leader just announced five days of public mourning in response to this targeted assassination. People are taken to the streets of Tehran in order to protest this larger move, as a lot of people are also pointing the finger at the United States for allegedly supplying a thousand pound bunker buster missile that was used for this targeted political assassination. This as Israel, with the direct support of the United States, has highlighted conventional military superiority in the region, as the United States has not only sent a significant portion of their aircraft carriers into the region, but also a lot of U.S. military soldiers that now are being added to the already 40,000 alleged U.S. soldiers in the region. This as the United States has also just supplied Israel with more military aid in the tune of billions of dollars, while at the same time keeping their borders wide open, allowing anyone and everyone to walk in. This as there's also a lot of news reports of advanced U.S. military equipment going missing, a lot of advanced U.S. military tech and advancements just being sold off to foreign countries. This says the situation is only going to get that much worse as Iran now is warning that this larger escalation, quote, will not go unavenged. Now, Iran predominantly has been showing a lot of bark, but not bite geopolitically, especially with their foreign policy here, showing a lot of restraint as they previously have announced that they will be responding and retaliating to Israel, which uh, they never really did. Their previous major retaliatory event was them literally uh, launching rockets and drones into the air for multiple hours for U.S. air defenses to shoot down very conveniently. This, as we're also learning about the Iranian supreme leader now taken to a secure location, as people in Iran believe that he will be the next potential target of the Israelis that might want to assassinate and take him out. This, as everyone is now looking at what will happen next from this, as it's clear this escalation will lead to more escalations, more conflict, more fighting, more people displaced, as there is a larger possibility that there will be soon boots on the ground and a larger invasion by Israel into the south of Lebanon. This, as the Israeli military has been preparing for this exact moment for a very long time, ever since the 2006 conflict, and has been staging in the north of Israel. This, as their previous adventure into that territory in 2006 showed that they weren't really prepared for this, as a lot of their troops were bogged down with close quarter clashes with Hezbollah fighters, as the previous conflict lasted 34 days and saw 121 Israeli casualties. As the larger assessment from this was that the Israelis were not prepared for a comprehensive ground operation, which now they allegedly have been preparing for and soon will be carrying out once again. Now, how will this potential ground invasion look like? Well, time will only tell. As NPR is reporting that they are now preparing for this larger military offensive that, of course, everyone will be paying close attention to. As already close to one million people have been displaced because of these larger attacks that have been happening between Hezbollah and Israel. As the Lebanese prime minister is announcing that they are experiencing the largest wave of displacement in its history. This, as a lot of people expect this conflict to, of course, grow and expand in the region as Haratz even has a very interesting opinion article that's describing a situation where Israel is, quote, deliberately provoking an escalation that might drag the United States into a conflict. As in the making of this video, we are getting new reports of the Israelis launching airstrikes in Yemen. Also, there's other reports of strikes happening inside of Palestine and in Iran as well. The Iranian reports are still kind of unconfirmed here as a lot of 
reports in the making of this video should always be, of course, questioned since there's always a lot of deliberate spread of fake news. Now, exactly what's happening here, we don't know. But the reports that are coming in right now is that there are strikes in Yemen, Lebanon and Palestine all at once. As in the United States, we get articles like this highlighting how the United States is trying to, quote, prevent this larger conflict from escalating, according to U.S. State Department officials, which I call an absolute lie. As the U.S. Defense Secretary just came out and believes that there's going to be an all-out war between these two countries, which could equal or exceed casualties of which we saw in Gaza. As the President of the United States announced that he's fully backing the assassination of this Hezbollah leader, hailing this as, quote, justice served. As the White House has officially put out a statement saying that, of course, they supported this larger military escalation, while at the same time, they're saying that they're trying to de-escalate the situation. This as the United States just sent another $8 billion to Ukraine, and on the same day, another $8.7 billion to Israel, U.S. taxpayers, that according to former U.S. Congress member Ron Paul, are just an afterthought in all of this as they're paying for the larger financing and escalatory wars in this world. As Ron Paul said, quote, while American society descends further and further into economic and moral calamity, those who work hard are forced to watch their earnings literally go up in smoke. As again and again, we keep getting mixed messages from the United States as they also just officially released another statement saying that an all-out war is not the way to return the people to home in the north of Israel. As a lot of Israelis also have been displaced because of the Hezbollah bombs that have been thrown their way. As we're seeing what we usually see from the United States, very kind of mixed messaging here about this entire matter. Where do they really stand? Do they want to de-escalate things? Are they okay with it? Do they want it to escalate? We're giving more money to this entire situation here, which of course is incentivizing these actions, which will pay for more rockets, which will pay for more missiles, which will continue this conflict further on. As it's also important to note here that the Prime Minister of Israel is embattled with a lot of political controversies and a lot of adversaries who believe that he will be leaving office as soon as these wars are over. And if you're Benjamin Netanyahu, you don't want these wars to be over because they also signal a larger kind of political end to his dynasty. As there are a significant portion of Israelis that are protesting his government that don't like him and want him out of political office. And with these conflicts escalating, the probability of that happening is becoming less possible. This as the United States was just involved in their own airstrikes as they went after militants inside of Syria, militants that they previously uh, supported, aided and abetted in order to try to get rid of the political current leadership of Syria. More of your U.S. tax dollars just going up in smoke as, of course, uh, we paid for a lot of these uh, Islamists to take down the secular government of Bashar al-Assad. And now we are um, literally spending more of your money taking them out after we previously supported them. Now, it's clear the situation in the Middle East is very tumultuous. And no matter what the United States says here, there is a concerted effort by a lot of neoconservative warmongers that want to see these wars escalate, that want a war with specifically Iran. And we have documented, especially the summer of this year, larger kind of escalatory kind of propaganda efforts that are being just put in a little bit here, a little bit there, trying to connect them somehow with the attempted taking of Donald Trump's life, as there's even small hints by, by the corporate media, and especially by the letter left by the second lunatic, that there is some kind of weird potential Iranian connection here, that the corporate media that takes their orders from the military industrial complex has been kind of pushing to the forefront of all this. We saw Donald Trump engage in all of this as well, as he specifically addressed the larger threats against his life, allegedly by the Iranians, as the Iranians also have allegedly now hacked his campaign and given that information to the Kamala Harris campaign. As a lot of people who are speaking out against these wars usually have the full might of the federal government trying to, of course, stop them. As Tulsi Gabbard even talked about when she opposed Barack Obama's request to start bombing more countries in the Middle East, that the White House immediately called her 
and threatened her, saying, how dare you stand against, as a freshman Democrat, your president who is from your home state of Hawaii. They didn't care about the substance. This as there's also another situation unfolding here, as there's a likely possibility that the Russians could arm the Iranians with nuclear weapons, especially with how geopolitically opposed the United States is, as we are also involved in a proxy war that the Russians could escalate at any time by just saying, hey, we got a whole bunch of nuclear weapons. We're just going to give the Iranians some. We're just going to give the North Koreans some. And we're going to create a more difficult situation for the United States. As uh, to me, looking at all of this, this is not advantageous for America, its people, and its interest. And if you do truly care about this country, you wouldn't let our political leadership and foreign policy be decided by individuals who are incentivized by it by getting enriched by it. These are the same people who are selling the weapons that are deciding how we are going to be using these weapons. As of course, they have a conflict of interest here, as there should be a larger kind of discernment. There should be a larger assessment. We should be taking a step back and saying, why are we doing this? Why are we sending more money? Why are we continuing these escalations? Where are we at a risk here to be affected by these escalations that we are helping, of course, push further up the trajectory of a full all-out war? And when there's a war... How were we positioned on the world stage to, of course, not be screwed over? How were we vulnerable? And we're not even looking at that as the borders are wide open. People get to walk in as we're making enemies all around the world. As strategically, the, the right situation would be to secure the borders, to, of course, make sure we're making the decisions based off the best interests of the American empire and, and not just uh, grubby, money hungry, sociopathic weirdos that uh, want to make a buck off of America, its people, and its country. Yeah, uh, that's the biggest difference here. And if you agree with that, share this video with your friends and family members. It is more imperative than ever. If you like the shirt that I'm wearing, get it on thebestpoliticalshirts.com. We just got a new banger that we're going to be uh, releasing later on today. As uh, this one that we just released uh, a couple days ago, Make America Not Fat Again, is uh, awesome. We're going to re be releasing another shirt later on today. And just understand that there are regular shirts that we release for the general public. And then other shirts that we release for members of LukeUnfiltered.com for a cheaper price. Plus, uh, only exclusive designs that are only available to members and no one else. You could show, hey, look, I'm a part of a secret members, not so secret, private, not so private quasi uh, organization that uh, is there to uh, speak to each other. As, of course, we just did good, our meetup uh, for it. members of Luke Unfiltered. Tired of being teased with meetups I'm not in Miami for. I was wearing one of Luke's T-shirts yesterday. It's, uh, it, was a, it was from the State of the Union. It, Biden had that red background where he looked like the emperor from star wars or something and he had his hands up and he's all like enraged and it said we're the good guys trust us and uh we had a picnic yesterday and a lot of people got a, a chuckle out of that and uh yeah so that's a publicly available t-shirt by the way i'm not in the secret society of t-shirts with him but uh he does make some good shirts and he's got the uh he's got the work ethic of an armenian rug merchant so that's a that's a hat tip to his consistent uh Willingness to make his offer to the market, which is something we all need to learn how to do. We're going to learn about uh, a lot of things tonight. You know, I mentioned uh, the Irish slavers who eventually, I guess, popped out Kamala, because when you get into her genealogy, it's, <clears throat> I mean, let, first off, let me say, I said several weeks ago, there wasn't really dispute whether or not Kamala Harris was black because her mom appear, appeared to be of Indian heritage and her dad was a Jamaican economist who I've seen and we've played clips of. Um, debating Jeffrey Sachs in 1989. However, it was brought to my attention that Jamaican is not really a race and that there are questions about who her dad is and who the parents of her dad are because uh, there are some contradictions and those contradictions don't start in conspiracy Reddit threads. They start by reading Kamala's own book that she published in 2019 for self-promotion and it has some what appear to be egregious errors errors like here's her with her grandmother who died four years before she was born stuff like that so i watched the candace uh clips we're going to see some of them tonight but the, she put out like four shows this week on this topic so it's not just like one little thing it's a whole thing um uh so i watched it kind of so you don't have to there is some merit to the line of questioning and the absence of uh evidence that would bring it back into Here's an explanation. It makes perfect sense. They might say, 
uh, for instance, that Kamala's adopted. Well, that would throw a curve into the, you know, the research, or they might say that they're not really related to those families, that they were, you know, indentured servants or, ser I don't know, uh, they married to help or something. I don't know, but we're going to get into it because Candace is, uh, she's got questions, but before we can get to those stories, we got a bunch of other juicy stuff like Eric Adams, you know, <clears throat> when Eric Adams takes money from the Turkish government, maybe <clears throat> that's bad. But when George Soros does business with the FCC and they change their rules for him, that's good. So you're just seeing it the wrong way, everybody. So, you know, I think Soros is really going to be the, the hero in this situation and violating the FCC policy during an election year definitely doesn't have anything to do with swaying the future of this country or taking control of it whatsoever. So I wouldn't worry about it. Soros also didn't have a plan for Ukraine, which is America's new Afghanistan. So, yeah, there's probably nothing to it. Scott, what did you uh, think of the week's news before we get into the clips? Did you see anything this week uh, the, off the top of your head that was like striking? I mean, it just the the agenda just marches on, man. Like it's just getting hot over there. Like, I don't know. It's obvious that, you know, we're probably going to go to war here very soon. And it's like and, I, and I'm sure we may touch on this later, like with the Trump stuff. But it's like the um, one of the really interesting pieces of all this is like they're trying to blame this. Um, this You know, there's an assassination attempt against Trump. Uh, blaming it on Iran, you know what I mean? But I think throughout the course of this Middle East conflict, it's been quite evident that Iran has been doing everything they can possibly do to avoid some larger war with the United States. And it's like, to me, that's what it seems like. Like when they're, like after, um, you know, I can't remember what it was, the specific incident that, that caused them to launch all those retaliatory uh, airstrikes back into Israel, but then they told them, "Hey guys, we're going to be launching an attack. Just kind of calm down. We're just doing this to like save." Was face, that before you know? or after their president's helicopter fell out of the sky? I think that was and, after. I and think the satellite imagery was wiped. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And so it, to me, it just seems like the last thing in the world they want. Like, and then all of these other transgressions against them, they haven't done anything to to retaliate, and they're just like kind of just. To me, it just doesn't seem like they want a large war with the United States. I don't know. I think what, what you're indicating is Israel has failed in getting the nutritious, life-saving information to you yeah. that Iran's behind everything, man. They're funding all the Arab countries against Israel, yeah. and yeah. they are the thing behind the thing. And if they could just get that, then it would all be over, and it's all going to be peaceful now because they whacked the yeah. guy, right? Mm -hmm. No, right? So it's yeah. moving goalposts all the time. Yeah. So, so I just, I, the last thing in the world I think they're, they're up to is trying to assassinate Trump. That's just me. I don't know. So like, like, you know, I see false flags on the horizon all over the place, man. And so just, you know, they always say the October surprise, right? It's October is a couple of days away. So I think things are going to get, well, we're going to have lots of stuff to talk about on the show. We'll just say that. It's like yeah, an October sure. Jack in the box is what it's going to be. Yeah. A whole bunch of them, a whole bunch yeah. of them. But, all it, right. but it, I mean, really just to summarize all that, dude, it's just like, it's really frustrating and sad to see all the, the further escalation. And I know that it's, it's like all this could be avoided and it's just really, you know, like, I don't, I don't know what it's going to take, but, um, Eventually, we have to like denounce Israel's aggression at some point. Somebody's got to do it. I don't know. Dude, it's just self defense, bro. Yeah, it's just self defense. Yeah. So I don't know, man. It's just sucks. Really sucks. Everyone's doing some kind of self help these days, and you can find a million self help courses out there. Most other courses out there are hosting lectures, they're hosting videos, they're maybe even doing Q and A's. And these are great starting points to encourage learning. But at Autonomy, we believe that hands-on practice is the best way to really lock in what we're learning. There's no better way to gain confidence and mastery than through action. After each lecture, we practice the concepts we've learned with other students, giving and receiving feedback in a non-judgmental environment. The result is mastery of concepts like entrepreneurship, ethical sales, and self-reliance in an environment that directly translates to the real world. Plus, you make connections with other like-minded individuals who are learning right alongside you, and you have a lifetime membership in the community. The Autonomy course with Richard Grove equips you with confidence, competence, and courage in a world filled with confusion and noise. You can learn more at getautonomy.info. We'll see you there.
What makes the Grand Theft World podcast unique, invigorating, exciting, and informative? Most other podcasts out there are either doing straight up interviews or they're just covering the daily news. They're covering current events from the day they happen. And that is effective. It's useful. It's a great starting point. And then sometimes these current events change during the week past the first story. So we like to give it a little time. You have to wait till some of the dust settles on these stories in order to give them accurate coverage. And the other thing that's really missing in the media landscape is covering the articles that are coming out every day. That's great. That's necessary. But who's bringing in contextual history so that you can understand what has been going on for decades and decades to lead up to the machinations and actions that we see unfolding today. So what we do here on the podcast is we cover current events. Many of these things are censored, but we wait about a week. As a forensic historian, I focused mainly through my career on the history of globalism and collectivism and things that they call maybe the new world order. There's a lot of facts to these sort of circumstances, groups, events, activities, working groups that they've had over time. So for Grand Theft World listeners, we not only break down the current events, most of which that are censored during the week, we provide you with contextual history, we give you the source notes, the references, we do deep dives, and this really empowers you with an understanding of context and history so that you can make more informed decisions in your life. There's also a community, a membership where you guys can actually ask questions and we can get into the show and share evidence. And there's a town hall weekly for Grand Theft World for those who listen to it and are interested in covering the stories that we don't get to during a six hour show. Listening to it an hour a day, you could uh, easily consume the week's news, but you're gonna have substance and meaning and context and understanding. And with that, you can make higher quality decisions in your life. So if you're interested, in more quality in your life, go to grandtheftworld.com, click podcast at the top, and we'll see you there. Thank you. These allegations are false. This isn't Grand Theft Auto, folks. This isn't a video game. What are the most surprising things that you discovered once you started pulling on that thread, who he was connected to, what institutions he was influential over, what events he participated in? Come on, man. What are we talking about? Come on, man. Oh. You don't have to think about it, dude. I got this quote because uh, you said you didn't know much about Klaus Schwab. I made it my job to, as soon as this happened, I'm like, okay, this guy's their front man. Let me learn about the official history of the World Economic Forum. I got their 40 year history. I got every book that Klaus Schwab has written or ghost written. I went through those books. This is one of the most interesting passages. Come on, man. Come on.